Boy, did I not want to do this. Star Wars The Last Jedi, I don't like it. This is why. Before we start the video, please consider that this is a spoiler video, so I'm gonna be talking about the main plot lines and happenings in the movie. If you haven't seen it, don't watch this video. You've been warned. All right guys, so let's establish one thing. This movie sucks. That's my opinion, it's my personal opinion. I've seen the movie 24 hours ago, and the fact that I don't wanna see it again means a lot to me, because I've never felt like this with any other Star Wars movie before. So, let's establish one thing. This is the least Star Wars movie in the Star Wars movie's history. So what happens? We have J.J. Abrams directing The Force Awakens and he's setting up a lot of things for this movie. He's setting up a path for the trilogy. And now Ryan Johnson takes over and we have a lot of questions that are not answered. Who's Rey? Who are her parents? Who's Snoke? How powerful is Snoke? Where is Luke? Why is he there? How did he get there? How powerful is Luke? Will Luke teach Rey? These are the fundamental questions people have been theorizing for over two years. And once I left the cinema two years ago, I was like, damn, I can't wait for the next episode. I'm gonna find out all this. Disney did not give this to us. Ryan Johnson did not give this information to us because, why? Because it's Disney and they know that they're sitting on a cash cow, so they wanna prolong all the information as long as possible. I went into this movie, sat there for two and a half hours. I came out, I still don't know any answers. Before I tell you what I didn't like about this movie, let me sum up some of the key features that I loved in this movie, because I can't just shit all over this movie. In terms of visuals, sensational, I loved it. I loved almost all the scenes, the CGI done perfectly. Even when they brought, up, brought back Puppet Yoda in CGI, although I don't know why they did that. It worked, it looked good, it was fantastic. When they light speed through Snoke's ship and the whole explosion, it's just fantastic. Great visuals, loved it. Sound and editing, perfect. I loved the sound from the very, very detailed parts when BB-8 had his coins inserted into his insides and he's rolling around and you can hear the coins like mumbling around inside him. Very good attention to detail. Uh, also with the transitions, they resembled the old Star Wars movies with the wide transition. I really, really loved it. That's great. Also something in terms of story-wise, Kylo and Rey's progression through this episode. They started out somewhere in The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, they grew both. Kylo got closer to the dark side, got himself established as the main bad guy for the third episode, and Rey is the good guy, trying to save Kylo and bring him back to the light side. We'll see where this goes. They did phenom phenomenal jobs. Both actors did their part really, really good. I can truly say that this is the least Star Wars feeling movie I've ever seen under the Star Wars brand. I don't know why Ryan Johnson just totally disrespected every Star Wars element that there was before and the movie became its own parody. Ryan Johnson disrespected J.J. Abrams in so many ways. J.J. set up a lot of things in the previous movie. The handing over the lightsaber to Luke. The story of how that lightsaber came to Mascanada, the, the story of race parentage, the, the Snoke background. Poof, Snoke is killed. Luke gets the lightsaber, he throws it away behind his back. And I was looking at my buddy, we were down in the cinema and watching it together. And I was like, did this really happen? Is this a parody we're at? Is this, is this, this is a bad joke. And when the iron comes down and it looks like a spaceship, it's just, it's disrespectful to the Star Wars brand. Come on, it's, oh my God. This movie had one scene that I loved. And that was when they killed Snoke. And then they fought the Praetorian Guard. So there's this scene where Kylo and Rey are in the throne room for Snoke's throne room and Snoke is talking to Kylo for him to kill Rey, but he actually doesn't do that. He kills Snoke by turning on the lightsaber that's next to Snoke and cuts Snoke in half, and Snoke falls off to the ground, and it's just this magical moment, and then they both get their lightsabers, 
and then they clash with the with the Praetorian guards and then kill them all and then they have this conflict between each other. That's the only good scene. I can't I can't name any other good scene apart from when they crash through Snoke's uh, ship and that, that's that's a gorgeous scene. That these two scenes maybe are worth the ticket, but that's it. Now, fun fact, the whole movie, throughout the whole movie, there is no lightsaber battle. Two lightsabers never touch, never cling. Because if when they battle, it's only against Praetorian guards, Snoke's guards, Rey and Kylo never fight. And Luke and Kylo never fight because Luke is just a uh, projection. And even though he dodges and everything, it doesn't matter. He couldn't have done anything like that. So, 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 so we, we didn't get any answers. We have very bad storylines. We don't have any lightsaber battles. None whatsoever. Uh, and then comes the small parts. You have Leia using the Force... In a weird way, we he looked like Superman in in space, and it was weird. It didn't fit the movie at all. It never it didn't fit the Force in any way or form. It, it just that was that was the only part wrong with Leia. Apart from they went with a too funny route, and I never actually got to see Leia. I got to see Carrie Fisher, and I love Carrie Fisher, but I wanted to see Leia. And then there's the other line with Poe po Dameron was okay, he did great, he, he, he stuck in the character, he grew in this, um, in this episode. We see him from being a very, very hothead to a more refined strategic pilot by the end when he commands everybody to turn back. But then we have this totally useless line with, po, uh, with Finn and Rose going off to the casino planet to find the hacker to bring him back. Totally useless. By the way, thanks to them, that's why the rebels were compromised or the resistance was compromised. There, are. because Finn and Rose went off to their mission, and they got caught, and then they found out that the resistance is fleeing with the camouflaged ships. They are the reason so many resistance people died there. So the anti-heroes of this movie, I wouldn't even say it would be Kylo. I would say it's Poe Dameron with the first disobeying Leia's orders. And then it's Finn and Rose going on their own mission, trying to, you know, fix something that didn't even need fixing. And got themselves into trouble and killed a lot of resistance crew and pilots and everybody. It's these three idiots that, that caused a lot of damage. A totally useless plotline for Rose and Finn to go off to a mission. And then when they come back and they're down in Crate and they're going towards, there's this huge cannon and they're going towards this cannon and you see Finn trying to sacrifice himself because this huge cannon was about to destroy the wall and everybody behind it and he's going towards the wall and then Rose just comes and, and, you know, it would have been a great story moment. They, it would have had balls to kill off Finn. That would have made him have purpose. That would have made him a legend. And now he's just, again, still nobody. He, he did nothing in this movie. And once he wanted to do something, Rose stopped him. Why? Because, you know, Rose is in love, gives a kiss, and then puts them in this awkward love triangle with Ray, Finn, and Rose. Who needs that? Up until this part, I was like, okay, doesn't matter. But I knew that Luke has to show up. There has to be a huge Luke moment at the end. And I had a scenario in my head, which I'll tell you at the end of this, this video on how I, I, I wanted this movie to go. And then Luke shows up and talks to Leia, fantastic, goes out and pulls out a blue lightsaber. And I'm like, why? When I first saw the lightsaber, I thought it was the red lightsaber. I thought it was Darth Vader's lead right, red lightsaber. That would have been so awesome. But no, it was his original blue lightsaber. For what reason? 
I don't know why didn't he have his green lightsaber on him. Bad, bad attention to detail or bad directing. That's all I can say. And then he talks to Kylo uh, and then can't convince him. There's no point he was there. Absolutely no point. He was just a freaking distraction. But, you know, they could have gotten there out of there. It was useless. Luke's presence there as a force projection was useless. Because you can tell the story another way. They, they would have ex escaped without Luke anyway. But, um, you know, the, 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 the very, very cheap moments Luke had with the rubbing his shoulders off after he's being shot with cannons. And then they talk with Kylo and then he disappears and then he dies off. What? Why? Why? See where I'm going with this? They had a cool character that they didn't use. Let me tell you how this ending should have been. Let me tell you what would have been the perfect ending for this movie and how it really, really needs to be. And let's do a petition and create this ending. So, we have Finn going towards the cannon, sacrificing himself to save the resistance behind the gates. Because if he doesn't go through there, the gates are blasted, everybody dies behind that because of the blast. So poof, he goes in there, big explosion, fantastic. Now they can't bombard the gates, but the AT or the guerrilla walkers are still going towards the base. Eventually they would make themselves burst in. Now, at this moment, you have the Millennium Falcon come in and distract the TIE fighters distract everybody and uh, that's when people inside the resistance inside Leia, Poe and everybody hear some noises and the foxes start running out and then they see light come up from the end of the passage Luke bursts open the rocks with his force powers like huge chunks of rocks goes through talks to Leia they have their moment he's there in person he is there in person. Goes through. He opens up the gate and he says, he'll go out and he'll fix it. He goes out. And then Kylo immediately sees Luke. And then orders the X-Wings, or orders the TIE Fighters to go immediately and shoot at him because the AT-ATs or the, the walkers are too far away. And then Ray managed to shoot down two, three TIEs, but two eventually make it to Luke. And then Luke sees him, force, crushes them and throws them away. Or doesn't crush him, but you know, just throws them away so he doesn't kill anybody. Just throws them away. By this time, ground troops are deployed from the walkers and they're making themselves towards Luke. About 15, 20 stormtroopers running. Luke sees them, does this force whatever, huge force explosion and has the 40 or 50 stormtroopers just burst up in the air and that's when Kylo orders for the walkers to shoot him and now the same way Kylo stopped the laser blaster the, the blast in midair in the force awakens Luke would stop all of the fire coming from the walkers every every one of them kind of like Matrix but you know more Star Warsy way and then that's what be, Kylo would be pissed off and he was like, he's going down to fight him. And they go down. Luke brings out the green lightsaber. Kylo has the red, his, his red lightsaber. And then they start a fight. But it's a fight more like Luke is sparring with, uh, with Kylo. He's, you know, it's just very easily blocks everything. Has an, more, more like in Empire Strikes Back, Vader did with Luke. Now Luke is doing the same thing with Kylo, but Luke doesn't want to hurt him. He's trying to talk to him. Kylo's doing everything and Luke just blocks everything, hurts him a little bit, cuts him on the hand, but nothing serious. And then tries to talk to him and then sees that Kylo's lost. And the only way he can save him, if he becomes one with the force. So he says, if you cut me down or you kill me now, I'll be more powerful than ever before. Just like Obi-Wan said to Vader. And then Kylo rushes and kills Luke. 
And Luke, before he dies, or before he, Kylo cuts him, he just evaporates into um, thin air and goes into a, become a Force ghost. And by the time the Resistance escapes with Rey and the Falcon, they have the moment they see Luke die. It's tragic. Everybody's there. Everybody can feel the pain. We've seen Luke be badass. We've had a lightsaber duel. We've seen awesome force powers being used. And we had huge emotions. Finn being killed. Luke being killed. A huge amounts of loss to the resistance. But this moment is such an amazing moment that will light up the fire. This is the spark that will light up the fire as Poe says. And I think that's how it should have ended. I think that would have been the perfect ending. And if this happens, I don't care about Snoke. I don't care about all the backstories. But we would have seen a badass Luke come back and show us what potential he had. We would have had a scene much more like Vader in Rogue One, but the light side version of that. And, and they took this from us. They took this from us. So that's my two cents. Uh, that's my opinion. I did not like this movie. It ranks very low in my Star Wars movies. I wanted a very different end Guys, thank you for watching if you like this video, please hit the subscription button I don't know if I'll be doing any Star Wars videos soon. I just wanted to get this out there. I'm a huge fan. So That's what I wanted. Thank you for watching until the next video stay safe and English. Thank <laughs> you.